is the Uplar. You've probably seen pictures of it. Um, it's pretty, pretty rudimentary, but believe it or not, it's years in the making. Um, this is where the oysters come as babies. And basically, there are two keys to oyster farming. And you see them, they start at the hatchery, but really, this is where things really start to come into play. Um, the first key, as you can see, is, uh, is water flow. Um, we use a pump at this point in the process to enhance water flow. You'll see that concept echoed throughout the whole process um, of growing an oyster. We use, after this point, we use Mother Nature to do it. And again, that's part of the reason why Duxbury Bay is so good for growing oysters, is that there's a massive tidal flush twice a day. So there's a strong current. Um, basically, you know, obviously oysters can't move. Um, they just sit there. So if you picture them sitting in stagnant water, and they have all their, you know, their nutrients around them, their little mini veggies, uh, then if the water's not moving at all, they just eat all the veggies around them and they fill the surrounding area with oyster poop and they don't have anything really to eat, you know, so. Um, but conversely, if you picture an oyster, you know, in a river or in like a stream of, of water, they're, they're just picking veggies out of a, or food out of a constant supply. Um, and so that's basically what we try to do is, is whisk water by them and let them take full advantage of all the nutrients in the bay. Um, and at this point, we do it with an electric pump. Um, we don't, this is kind of the only real input of energy besides the engines that we use to, to, to get around out there um, in the process. Uh, and again, there's no input of nutrients either. We just kind of take advantage of what's al already there. The way this works is, um, is you have this trough in the middle and the pump is down right under where you guys are standing. Um, you can't really see it. But uh, basically, this is like a water vacuum. Uh, you have these boxes here called silos. And you'll see that they have a mesh bottom. And the oysters are so small at this stage that if you were to use like window screen, for instance, it would go right through. Um, so we use a really fine fine mesh and I think it's like 500 microns or something um, and so what we do is we take we take the oysters and we put them down into this box and they sit on the mesh and the only place for the water to come up and through the pump the siphon the, the vacuum that's happening in the trough here is up through that mesh so you have this this suck of you know gallons of water every minute up through the mesh you know out through the holes in this PVC pipe, which I don't know if you guys can see in the, there's actually holes in here. So it comes through the holes and then into the trough and out the back. So it's a constant stream and it's whisking away the waste and it's also providing a constant supply of nutrients. Out the back, like right here? Yeah, it goes out that way. So right where you're standing. And we have, um, we have about 14 of these upwellers. And in each one of these boxes, there's actually, uh, we put in, basically you get like a little wet nap, about this big, full of 800,000 oysters. Um, and it weighs around two pounds. And this is the kind of other key to oyster farming. When they're in the silos at this stage, those 800,000 oysters can double in volume in a day. So they're this deep sitting on the screen, and then you come back the next morning and they're this deep sitting on the screen. Um, Flash forward around 18 months, and those 800,000 oysters will weigh about 280,000 pounds, and they take up an entire acre of the bay. So it's managing that volume is the other is the other key to what we do here. Um, and the way we do it at this stage is grading. Um, I'll get into that after I get down here and show you the babies. I'll try not to get my shorts wet. Band-Aid's gonna come off, man. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> These are baby babies. These have probably been in here for a week or so. You can see they're kind of all different sizes. That's a lot of oysters. They're like puppies. They, <laughs> they grow at different rates and they poop, they poop a lot. So, <laughs> so, so yeah, there's about 800,000 in here. Um, we try not to drop the silos. They're kind of expensive. <laughs> Do you guys have a limit, like per per year? Uh, nope. I mean, just in terms of what we can farm. Oh, okay. Other than that, there's no like set limit. We have a limited amount of space that we can use to farm. Can I touch it? 
Yep. Get that a tiny muscle. Anybody else? Yeah. I wouldn't recommend eating them. They're kind of crunchy at this stage. Softies. I've been advocating that we we bag these things and sell them as oyster snacks for a while, but <laughs> it turns out they start to smell pretty bad after some time. It's just fully cold. Huh? No, it has the copies. Oh, okay. oh yeah, oh, right. Just the just like bottom part is grown more. That's wild. They look exactly like a, an oyster already, though. Yeah, no, they're, they're a little meat. Actually, at the stage where uh, in the hatchery they're actually microscopic, you can already see their shell and like the whole. They look like a little oyster. Wow, that's wild. This is pretty cool. So, um. If you guys notice, these, get, like I said, they're all different sizes. You know, you've got this one right here. He's almost ready to go out to the to the bay. Sorry, I'm not being very clear about that. This one right here. <laughs> and then you've got these little guys. You know, his brethren are not quite so robust. Um, so siphon through each one? Yeah, so basically a lot of what we do at this stage is um, it's called grating. Um, if I can pop out of here, I'll show you what that entails. Basically what that is is the oysters um, that go out to the bay are around a quarter inch which is about the size of your pinky nail. The size of my pinky nail. I don't know if any of you have freakishly large or small pinky nails. <laughs> yeah, large one. Yours is pretty damn big. <laughs> so yeah, like, like my finger now. I don't have a pinky nail. Thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> That's alright. Sensitive top. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so basically what we do is we take a quarter inch screen right here. Oh. This is much bigger obviously than the mesh in the silos. And we take those silos out and we run them through um, we run them through the screen. And this does two things. One, it takes the quarters, the quarter inch oysters that and that are ready to go out to the bay and separates them. And the other thing is that doing this daily is the point in the process where we actually start um, kind of exerting our our farming technique and, and the kind of the hand of the grower um, in how the oysters finally turn out. Um, so <clears throat> a lot of what that is is knocking off the new growth. It's just like getting a haircut or trimming your lawn or something. Um, you know, you cut off most of the new growth, but not all, and you know, you get when you shave your head or whatever, you get thicker hair in return. Uh, it's the same thing with oysters. By kind of sifting them over this mesh daily, we start to knock that new growth. And what that does is it creates an oyster with a thick shell, first of all. And second of all is because of the way the shell grows, it starts to cup the oyster. So that you get that beautiful round oyster with a deep cup, um, rather than, you know, if you get something from a farm that's not as intensive, um, you know, it's flat and there's not as much meat in it and it doesn't hold the liquor as well. So um, that's the point in the process that we do this. We estimate that we handle each oyster between 17 and 25 times before it actually reaches the market. Um, and that's, that starts at this stage and then it ends with, uh, with the cull and counting them and putting them in bags um, out on the oyster place. So, like I said, from here they go out to the bay and um, that's where we're going to go. So um, we're going to go up here and across the lawn and then down into the boats uh, over there. So CJ will set up over there. Guide you, yeah.